Hello again, fellow Mion enthusiasts. My name is Nick. Uh, welcome back to FM Live. And today I'm going to show you how to use our uh, Flying Miata toolkits. Um, we get a lot of questions about these. Um, so if you have any uh, questions uh, during this video, please leave them in the comments down below. Uh, and we'll try to get to them uh, during the video here. If we don't get to them or we don't see them until after the video is over, uh, we will try to get back to you on in the comment section on YouTube. So please, again, post those below and uh, we will get to them as soon as we can. Um, so what are the toolkits that we offer? So we offer a couple of different toolkits um, to help you install various seals um, and to make installation of say, like a timing belt uh, a little bit easier with uh, whatever your Miata you have for NA or NBs. Uh, so we have a number of them here. They contain a lot of the same components. Uh, the main differences are going to be that the, the small nose crank uh, 1.6 cars will include one of our small nose crank, uh, crank seal installers. Uh, rather than the big nose cranks uh, installers here, which are included with the 94 to 2005 kits. And then if you have a VVT engine where you have the larger um, seal, a uh, camshaft seal on the intake cam, uh, rather than you would also need the standard size cam seal installer here, but then you would also need the VVT cam seal installer as well. Here uh, we have the rear main crank seal installer tool. And here we have the Ninja tool to help you line up the cam gears while you're doing a timing belt install. And here is the crankshaft holding tool. Uh, the one in our current kits is actually zinc plated, so it has a gold appearance to it. Uh, this is one of the older ones we have lying around the shop. The tools here are made of uh, nylon and chopped carbon fiber, uh, and they're made or printed on our uh, Mark Forged 3D printers. Uh, they're very strong, they're uh, oil resistant, and they, will, uh, they do a very good job of lasting through multiple uses. Uh, and they're definitely, uh, we prefer them over our aluminum tools. Uh, they're a bit more uh, easy to use and easier to store. Let's start with uh, how to uh, install the Ninja tool. We get a lot of questions about this one uh, and it can uh, be difficult, but with the right tools and a little bit of fiddling, you can make these uh, fit just fine. So essentially what you wanna do to start with is make sure these, are, these marks here are pretty closely lined up with the little marks on the feet of our Ninja tool guy here. So you can use a crescent wrench here if you have the valve cover off to use on these little crescent uh, sections on the camshaft itself. Um, or you can use, uh, if you've left these tightened while you have everything apart, you can use a 14 mil uh, socket to turn these as well. So I'll grab that as well. So to start with here, Want to at least try to get those roughly in the right uh, neighborhood here so that you don't have to work too hard to line them up. And because of the spring tension in the valves, you're going to get a little bit of pushback sometimes on these. So it will require a little bit of fiddling to line these up correctly. So as you go to line this up here, you see these are actually fairly well lined up already. And so in this case, it's just going to require a little bit of fiddling. Just like that. And it should slide in nice and even. Once you've done that, you wanna check and make sure that the marks on each cam gear here are lined up with the feet on that Ninja tool. And again, it may be difficult to get that to slide in. We get a lot of questions about that. So either use a 14 mil socket here or a crescent wrench or some combination of both uh, to make sure these cams are lined up just right so that tool slides in there. So let's then move on to the cam seal install. So we want to select our cam seal installer here. And we'll need 14 mil socket again. So I've already got this mostly disassembled to make it a little bit easier for us to film. So here is the cam seal. You'll want to install it with that open end facing inward right there on the end of the camshaft, kind of line it up. Take the cam seal installer and slide it right over that. Carefully thread this bolt in. And once you've snugged it up a little bit there, carefully just start to tighten that bolt and that installer will carefully press that seal evenly into the bore of that cam cap. And as you can see, it does a really good job of evenly pushing the seal directly into the bore so it doesn't go in kind of cockeyed. And once you get right down there to the end, you definitely don't need to over tighten this. Once it gets pretty close to flush there. And 
and then simply loosen this bolt and pop that tool back off. Just like that. And now here we see seals pressed in very evenly and we're good to go on that one. Next, let's show how to install our crank holding tool. So on this one, you'll have to get the engine torn down sufficiently so you can ac access all of these e uh, easily. And the best way is to take all four of these little uh, 10 mil bolts out. Carefully remove that belt guide and the timing wheel. Set those off to the side. And then depending on which engine you're working on here, if you have a small nose, 1.6, you'll use this end here, the closer bolt spacing. And if you have a big nose, uh, 1.6 or 1.8, you'll use this end here with the multiple bolt holes. And all you're doing is lining up the holes on the tool with the holes here on the crankshaft and simply using these little bolts to hold this tool to the crank. So you can also use this tool um, as something to hold uh, while you're breaking the flywheel uh, bolts loose um, if you're doing a clutch job um, or if you need to get this bolt loose here. Simply use this and we have this cover installed still so it doesn't fit up this way but you can also use this and mount this vertically and use it to wedge against the water pump here to help you break these loose. And then make sure you've got these tight so it doesn't move around a lot and cause some extra play there. And we're good to go on those. We'll go to the rear main seal installer tool, which is this one right here. The three holes on it. And let me spin this around here so we can see it a little bit easier. Essentially what you're doing here, once you have one of your new seals uh, out in your hand, simply line that up carefully on the bore and then take this tool, line it up with the holes and thread three of these bolts back in. This one requires a little bit more uh, care as you tighten all these bolts. You don't want to ramrod one of these bolts all the way in while leaving these other ones loose. You want to evenly tighten all three of these bolts down to ensure the tool properly presses that seal into its bore without, making, uh, without uh, having it go cockeyed. Uh, which would can potentially ruin the seal and you'll need to get another one. So again, simply kind of even all these bolts up. Just like that. When you have a new seal, it'll be sticking a little bit further back. Uh, once you've e evenly gotten these uh, started here, you'll just use a, a wrench or a socket, depending on which, which one you have available to you, and just carefully tighten each one in sequence until you get all the way flush with the back side there. Mostly like this. You don't need to over tighten this. Um, once it stops, you don't need to keep cranking on it. Once it's, once it's hit its point there, uh, then you can slowly back all these bolts back out. Remove the tool and double check to make sure the seal went in correctly. There's no uh, uneven uh, edges like sticking out of the bore. Obviously this one's a used seal, but when you have a new seal pressed in with the tool, you'll see it's nice and flush all the way around. Okay, so we did have some questions set up beforehand. Uh, so let me get to covering those here. Uh, so first question we had is, is the cam gear tool designed to withstand torquing the cam gear bolts to spec without flexing? Uh, the answer is yes. We did test that um, to make sure that they can handle uh, being used there to torque those cam bolts. However, you don't want to use that to loosen those two cam bolts as if someone previously uh, over tightened those, that tool may not to tolerate that excessive torque uh, that you need to use to loosen those. So while you can use it to torque them down, don't use it to, um, to loosen them. For that, you'll want to use your adjustable crescent wrench here and set it on one of these crescents, uh, depending on which camshaft you're working with, and use this to hold that in place while you work with a socket wrench or an impact tool or whatever you're using. That way you don't damage your ninja tool. 
Okay, so how do you line up the Ninja Tool? I did go through that here. Essentially what you're doing, you can either use those crescents again on the camshafts or these bolts themselves. And you'll essentially just need to, sometimes they'll slide right in just like that. Other times they'll fight you a little bit. They'll be just a little bit misaligned and simply just play around with it a little bit until you have both of those marks on each foot lined up with each mark on the cam gears. Uh, I had another question about, can you torque down the bolts uh, with the Ninja Tool installed? Again, yes, uh, make sure you're using the proper torque uh, for those bolts. We did test that tool to make sure that it was up to that challenge, but again, you don't wanna use that to loosen those bolts. Uh, next question we had was, can you show how to attach the, the uh, crank tool? Uh, I think I covered that as well, again. Just want to remove uh, the belt guide and the timing wheel and use two of those four bolts to attach the tool to the face of the crankshaft here. And again, you can use uh, the water pump as a wedge point to hold, uh, to hold it in place while you loosen this. Um, you can also use this tool to hold or have a friend hold uh, the crank still while you loosen those flywheel bolts in the back while you're in the clutch. Okay, so that's all the questions that we had lined up beforehand for this one. Um, do we have any questions? Uh, from the from the audience. The old Ninja Tool had holes that you could run zip ties through. Does the new Ninja Tool also allow you to zip tie the tool to the cam gears? Uh, the question was, does the new Ninja Tool still have the holes drilled into the tool to allow you to zip tie the cam gear to the tool to make sure everything's lined back up when you reinstall? The answer is yes. We do still have those holes drilled there uh, for that exact purpose. Okay, do we have anything else? I have an ATI damper. Does your crank bolt tool also work for that? Uh, the question was, if you have an ATI damper, will can you still use our crank bolt tool? The answer is yes. Uh, the, the pulley would be different, uh, but it will. the crank bolt tool will still attach the crankshaft the same way. Anything else? Okay, sounds like uh, that's all the questions we have uh, up to this point. So again, if you have questions that we didn't get to or something else we didn't cover in the video, please mention it down below in the comments and we will do our best to get to you as soon as possible. Um, hopefully it gives you a good idea of how easy it is to use all these tools um, to uh, perform these uh, seal replacements on NA and NB engines. Um, if you enjoyed this video or learned something new, we'd really appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe uh, below. And uh, we do new videos every week, so if you have an idea for a video, please leave it in the comments. Uh, we're always looking for ideas for new video topics, and we'd love to hear your ideas. Uh, thanks again for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.